In this video, we'll be taking up the homework sheet on solving factorable polynomial inequalities algebraically. The key word here is factorable. Everything here, you can factor. Okay, well, the ones that aren't factored already. So, for example, five, question five, six, and seven, those uh, cubics or, or uh, quadratics, they can all be factorable. If they are not factorables, uh, if they're not factorable, then you need some extra technique or some graphing software to help you solve that inequality. Uh, but we won't deal with those scenarios on quizzes or tests because I won't supply you with a graphing software, uh, graphing calculator. Um, so everything I give you is indeed going to be factorable. All right, let's take up the sheet. Okay, so question one: uh, all those inequalities are linear inequalities, and they wanted us to. Um, uh, state the solution uh, on a number line, okay, which is something you learned in chapter one. Uh, because they're all linear inequalities, these ones you can just rearrange and and eventually you'll be able to solve the inequality. Uh, for question two, they were both quadratic inequalities, and unfortunately, they wanted me to solve it using cases, uh, which is not something I prefer because it's it's very cumbersome. So I did it nonetheless, okay. So, for example, when is it less than zero? When both factors are positive, or oh, sorry, when when the first factor is positive and the second factor is negative, or when the first factor is negative and the second factor is positive. So, those are your two cases. For question three, they ask us to solve using an interval table and show the solution on a number line. So I solved it using an interval table and I showed them my solution. Uh, the good news about number three is it's, and number two, it's already factored for us, so we didn't have to do the factoring. Um, we can create the intervals uh, very quickly because it was factored for us. Um, number four, they didn't specify any technique, so I chose to solve it by uh, graphing the polynomial. I find that that is the fastest way to do it. So I solved it by graphing. So that was four A, B, C. Uh, the good news with number four is that it's also factored for us. Okay, so you didn't have to do any factoring. It came. The question came with the polynomial factor. So four A, B, C, D. I solved it all by um, my gra by graphing. Uh, question five. So that one was uh, <laughs> was bad on two fronts. It's not factored, and it wanted me to solve by cases. So first I have the factor, then I indicate the cases. Uh, I, I generate the cases, and they want me to show the solution on a number line. Okay, so let's just look at 5b. Same thing, quadratic polynomial. Um, you have to factor first. Uh, then you solve by cases. So there are two cases. Uh, for C, it was a cubic. Oh, that one was long. So I had to factor first, I had to factor the cubic, and I couldn't do it by grouping. So that took a while. And after that, I needed to show the four different cases. Okay, so I solved for the solutions for all four cases. And then I wrote my solution on the number line. So uh, what was that? 5C? That was pretty long. And 5D is basically the same as 5C. 5D, you have to factor it, but the good news is that 5D you can factor by grouping. Okay, so I factored by grouping, and then unfortunately, I have to solve by cases. I generated four cases, and then I state the solution to the inequality. Okay, number six. So this one, basically the same as five, but this time we're not using cases, we're solving using an interval table. So there you go, I solve using my interval table. Uh, but all the ones in question six did not come factored, so I have to factor it and then solve uh, using the interval table. And hopefully you realize that if you can factor, then <laughs> question five, six, and seven is, I would argue, is impossible. Okay. Um, so solving inequalities really will, relies on your ability to factor because I can assure you on the test or quiz, I will not factor the polynomials for you. Okay, they will not come factored. It will be your job to factor it. Okay. Why would I factor for you if, if you have that skill set, right? 
Okay, so now let's do 6b, uh, factor, factor, solve using an interval table. Uh, 6c, uh, factor, this one's pretty easy to factor, you don't need any factor theorem. And then uh, use your interval table, state the solution. So if they don't specify what method of stating a solution, I will always use interval notation. I find that the fastest. Okay, 6d, 6d I changed it up a little. So it says solve using intervals. So I factored and then I drew a number line and that's how I demonstrated my intervals. So uh, some teachers uh, are accept that, but if they don't accept it, then you should revert back to the previous interval tables. Uh, let's see, 7a. So I demonstrated intervals on the number line instead of in the form of a chart. Um, yep, yeah, I, I state the solution to that quadratic inequality. And then B, factor, use the number line, state the solution. So I am personally okay with this uh, stating the intervals on the number line as opposed to in the form of a table, okay? But like I said, double check with your teacher. Okay, um, yep, just a lot of factoring, okay? So you can go over it yourself. All right, question eight was a nice little word problem. Um, they had a box that was measuring 36 centimeters by 15 centimeters by eight centimeters. You decrease each dimension by X and the volume of the box has to be less than or equal to 930 cubic centimeters. So create your inequality. Uh, you gotta do the expansion, no shortcut really, set equal to zero. And now you're ready to solve the inequality, but unfortunately that means you have to factor. And then I found the, uh, the zeros of the polynomial, which will create my intervals. Uh, I, demonstrate, I demonstrated it through the number line. Now, x must be between zero and eight. Why is it between zero and eight? Because um, one of my dimensions, or the smallest dimension of this box, is eight centimeters. So if that's the case, I can't decrease by eight centimeters or more or any value more than that, okay? Because there's one dimension that only has eight centimeters to give up. So at the very most, um, it has to be a number uh, just less than eight, because uh, I can't decrease the dimension to nothing, and then I have any box at all. So anyways, this is my direction. I'm gonna decrease it, but it has to be some value less than eight, okay? And because that is the case, um, uh, the minimum dimension of this box is occurring when x is, five um, and then I solve for the dimensions of the box so I'm actually decreasing each dimension by five centimeters all right so question nine actually sorry before I move on the question I just want to state something here this restriction is important because what this is saying is you can decrease the um, the dimensions of each each box by like 64.5 centimeters and 65 and 66 and so forth and so on but it doesn't make any sense because you can't decrease it by that much uh, for the reasons I mentioned it before all right sorry back to number nine um, basically this was a cubic sorry this was a quintic uh, polynomial uh, or quintic inequality, so I just rearrange it, set equal to zero, and once I saw quintic, I was like, there's no way I'm using factor theorem. So I tried really hard, I looked for patterns, and I factored out by grouping, okay? So luckily, it was, you were able to factor by grouping, so uh, that's my strategy, but if you missed that boat, then you know what? It's all good, just use factor theorem. Just keep guessing around and, and slowly uh, break that quintic down into, into a quartic and then a cubic, and then a quadratic and slowly found that find the factors. Anyways, uh, I use my number line to show the intervals and uh, that's the solution. So uh, this, this sheet was pretty lengthy, but it's good practice because this is your first experience with inequalities.